My name is John Kinto. Kelechini. To Bashis Chengi Kapaha. No, no. She no, Kaidne, Mexican clan. No, no. But Ani is my my father's father, my Nali. That's the way it is, you know, son. But Ani. Yeah. Folded the armor, whatever it is. And Kelichiri is the clan that I am. And my father is a Edgewater Kappa. And uh, my, my family, my spot, the Tachini. Tachini with tobacco, I don't know. We'll, we'll come from the shoe up. But he never cared. And then there is supposed to be a blue, a blue stocking or socks. And it's supposed to be dark. They cut the related to night. Just here. And then this pants is land, soil. This one here is cutting oh, or corn, corn pollen. That's what it is. And the color of this red here is a marine coat. And the Tene, the individual or human being, the warrior represents the jury. So that's the way it is. Now, let's go to this here. I never explained that to her. Why we work also. This here is the shield. Something defensively, or something guarding something for protection, the four from the the special color of the black, blue, yellow, and white. That's a special color in Navajo. This feather here, there's a feather. It comes from the eagle up there. When you see a, a real light feather coming down like this, you know, you go chase it and catch it before it hits the dirt. That's what they call a night That's what they call it. That real fine, like a cotton, remember? That's what it is here. So that's what they, they care that. My my crew was a hundred percent trained, you know, whatever they are. This is the ninth regiment. Regimental ninth marine and third marine division and it contains three regiments and all together. In this division, there was about 30 coat talkers. You can develop a word just like that. We were taught to learn 200 and 
200 words. The first 29, you was the first 29, they learned and made, developed 211. So in other words, 411 words, including us, we came in second. We came in second. We developed that 200 word. No, nobody know. Not even on Navajo Nation didn't know. Just us guys. Just few of us, I guess. Now, I want to tell you about the word I made. Rabbit. 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 Uh, root. R O U T. Root. There's a lot of a lot of words to it. You may path, trail, road, so rock. You take that rock, your left rock. When you're when you communicating, he says route or reroute, something like that. So I, I, we were talking about, you know, talking about what, how we going to call this. All of a sudden, I, I used to hurt sheep around here, on the way out there, and way up there in the canyon. I used to see a hurt sheep, and I saw dens there, rabbit. See, uh, sometimes the snow or or wind like this the other day, wind. You put a lot of fine sand there, and, and all of a sudden the rabbit, they come out hopping around on the, you see tracks on it. Says, uh, what do we call rock? R is rabbit. So, O U T E, we call this rabbit track. Smart. They're very smart people. They almost got A. A. And the reason why is that they, they sent the coat back to the mom the company, mom the division. We want to add at three or two names to A. At and well, I three and and uh, X. You use that as an A. I'm not telling you what school here in, in the university somewhere, maybe in Chicago, and. Uh, they, they, they were getting to it, get what A is. So they thought that to, we, we say Belasana. Now we say Belasana. Spanish people say Manzana. So you know the similarity, the sound. That's the reason why they, they almost got A. First, after I got back from, after we got back from Guadalcanal there, two weeks later, I got sick too. Then there was malaria. Oh, I think it got me in here. I saw two, two angry boys die. You know what? It gets in your stomach and then that he starves you to death. I don't think every, anybody ever talk about a medicine or pill that we, we took for that thing, malaria. They call it Arabin. It's color like this. Bitter, bitter, bitter. When we got to Guadalcanal, the, the he came out with that and he says, everybody take one a day, one a day. So the sergeant had to stand there and give us a peel and 
we had to use it. You know, we had to swallow it before breakfast when we were lying in Charla every morning. Until we got to Guam, they lift that thing. Two years later, so they lift that thing. And I can tell you him, you look at him, green right here. And, and we, we, we look like Chinese, our colors, our colors turn yellow. No, we light like Chinese or Chinaman. And the uh, Anglo kids, they had the green here, where those shadows are, green. And that's what the, what the Edelbrand does to you. Some of them still got malaria. That's supposed to be some kind of a jungle disease. I got hit here. Iwo Jima, it happened 65 years ago. Nobody knows anything about it. Those people are sitting up there behind, as the claimants, like a uh, Supreme Court sitting up there. They don't know anything about it because they were even living at that time. They were down on the I says, you don't exist at that time. And they happened to be over there. They asked for witness. The one that fixed my leg up there on the, on the ship, I think he's gone. I met his Navajo boy on the ship too, hospital ship. What do you want? What do you want? I want ice cream. OK. I saw a bowl, a bowl over there is about that big. He came back with a whole ice cream and a cake. Well, I finished it too. It's a, it's a long story. I just want to say from New Zealand, we went this way, went to New Happies, went to Guadalcanal, we went to Pokerville and back. We went to Marshall Island, to Marshall Island, uh, Gilbert Islands, and others where we have campaign. And then we went up to Iwo Jima, came back, and back to the state. May, May 5th, we left. We left Guam. So uh, back to here, if you figure that out, how many hundred thousand miles is that? I told those guys down there, Chinese, you couldn't even make it up here to 600 miles. With all the miles I've been, went through. And, and if I didn't travel all that place, you know, he wouldn't be existing, see. That's the way he is. Happy. Happy. You've forgotten everything what happened back there. All these things about going back. Like I said, Mama. And my little brothers and sisters, they grown up. Look at it, they don't know me. That uh, it so gets uh, sometimes you get emotional about it, you know, when you think about those things. But uh, <clears throat> it, it uh, happened. 42, I had to be over there, 40, come back until 45. I went in about 20 years old. And I was back over here 24 years old. I was, he, 
he was our supervisor, the man. And he's the only one that had a vehicle. He, he commuted from Fort Defiance to Pinedale over there, uh, east of uh, east of Gallup there. Carson's cave right there, there's a road going up. I guess one morning the, his wife and a little baby about two weeks old. And she would, uh, he was in the cradle, cradle board. He went around that corner and talking about uh, drunk driver, I guess somebody hit him. His wife got killed. The little baby got hurt. Somehow he hit on the passenger side, you know, hit. He, he was safe. He, I guess the door went open and he got ejected. The baby got. Uh, the, the, the vehicle got together like this, you know. Yeah, to get the baby out of there. I guess he, he got hurt real bad. One morning, the man came back and says, he was crying. The baby looks like it's going to die. His eyes are like that. All he sees the white of the eye. A person that pretty close dying, his eye goes up. Says uh, the baby needs blood. And uh, a boss says, "You, you four guys go to you go to that hospital. And see which one will match your blood." So we went down there, walked down there. It was me. It matched his blood. So the, that, after, that same afternoon, I went over there and just put me on the operating table, put the baby down there and put him here. And the man, the next morning, somewhere around 10 o'clock, he came on and he, the baby opened his eyes. He says, so that's back in 1942.